Morning, you're gonna play the screen up in. I've got a store which is about to Oh yes I do. Sure. Thank you. I've got a script on stuff, but I can't. All right. Good morning, everybody. Sorry I'm a little bit late. I was running through my program.
Fantastic. That's a workout for you. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's pro probably also took a lot of work and memory and all that. Yeah. No, it is a very difficult piece. Yeah, I was, you know, I was thinking this year I had two students playing this. One with impeccable technique, didn't miss a single note. And it was very pleasant. <laughs> now, if you think this piece is pleasant, that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible <laughs> criticism. And, but it was amazing. It was amazing that she is a tiny little girl and she has phenomenal uh, agility. Um, and she could play, play this piece without fail. I mean, I had her play on, on different times and she never failed. And the other student just freshly learned this piece. Uh, it's a very tall girl, opposite, and uh, uh, the technique is, can be sketchy, and uh, the pedal use is somewhat inconsistent, and she misses notes here and there. But I must say, uh, it's far more penetrating for me. Um, she would just go for the for the kill all the time. And uh, so the, the question comes down to, what are we looking for? What are we looking for in, when we play music? And recently, last week, I just came across, my, my wife always sends me these little videos that if I ever have free time, I shall watch. And, uh, and it was, uh, you know, Horowitz at home and with Vanda sitting on the couch there trying to <laughs> endure the session. <laughs> and, and he was just going on uh, nonchalantly trying a little thing here, a little thing there. And, and then they showed a passage of his Rachmaninoff sonata, one of the highlights uh, towards the end, uh, probably the very end. And just about every, in every single chord, there were round notes, okay? Every single chord. I, I was, uh, I had a great uh, privilege and luck to have attended three of his recitals in, in the very late days. And uh, he came to Boston and played the Rachmaninoff Second Sonata. They were in, in Symphony Hall, of course and there was not a single seat empty. Back then, you have to buy tickets by sending your check in mail, and, and then you will get a ticket back in mail, you know, two months ahead. And uh, I paid $50. This was in the early 80s, and that's a lot of money. <laughs> and I got a seat, which was in the last row of the third balcony. And on and the very uh, uh, corner that I could see Horowitz's face, not a hint. Uh, but I had the whole view of the entire symphony hall in my, you know, in front of me. So he went on to play. <laughs> I swear, the entire audience just went there. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, of course, everybody was looking around. Yeah. Did that happen to you? Did that happen to you? <laughs> and uh, you know, here was this frail guy coming on the stage. <laughs> and, then, and then he sat down and... <laughs> My God, you know, that was it. That was worth the ticket. <laughs> uh, I remember, of course, nobody knew that piece at that time. And I remember I was thinking, wow, Rahmaninov composed something so modern. 
so many dissonances. Well, now I actually recorded it. I had a little spy <laughs> Walkman, <laughs> and I recorded it. I should go back and check how many right notes he played. <laughs> but he was so modern sounding, I thought, I, can't, I couldn't imagine that Rachmaninoff would write something like this. And, uh, but anyway, that was my deepest imp impression, you know, of the great pianist. And so I was thinking, you know, I wish to hear some edges, sharp edges. Now, what is causing this kind of a fluid but mild expression? It is obviously the pedal. Yeah, the pedal use. Um, if you pay attention to Horowitz, when in passages where other pianists were usually, uh, you know, traditionally use pedal, he would not. <laughs> where other pianists would use pedal, uh, uh, would not use pedal, he would. <laughs> you know, he very often went the opposite. But I always thought Horowitz was incredibly smart. Was incredibly smart. He had the human psyche in control. He knew what makes things boring and what, uh, how much attention you have. And when the attention is about to run out, he will renew your lease, you know, your contract. And that he, that's, that's a gift. And uh, uh, of course, back then, nobody else was was able to do. I think Coteau had some sense in the late days, but I'm not so sure if he was doing it out of smarts or he just did it out of because he didn't practice. Uh, that we don't know. But uh, uh, we have to sort of keep in mind how much can I listen to it? And uh, now, I thought, where could we? Uh, one of the trademark of the virtuoso pianists they have, they had or have, is they trust a single note. They trust if they play, they trust it. They're not nervous about it, and they are not apologetic. If they want to play a note, they just play a note, and that's it. No need for uh, any, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, decorations, you know? So, and try that, see if you, this piano is pretty good sounding anyway, and mm -hmm. uh, you, you should just trust it, let's try. Yeah, uh, try without pedal, see what I'm... That's it. That's it. Now, for this repetition, you probably will need a little pedal, but only only for that. Now, without pedal, you can almost glide. Trust it. If you just pull it, it will fall into E. Yeah. D. It will skip the F. Yes. Let me see. Uh, uh, 
hold with your hand. Don't play with him. This. If I put this, that no hold. Do you um, just grab your hand, push it. Do it quick. There we go. And that's another. Yeah, that's right. One accent. Good. Go on. You can still do it. See, it's if we play, it's not really legato. If you play the D a little softer, then it sounds like legato. Yes. This, this reminds me of my early study at Germany, Hans Leigroff. He made everybody practice it. Da, 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 da. And just so that we, number one, become friendly and uh, acquainted ourselves with thumb, but also realize that uh, the, the, finger can, the fingers can travel rather speedily between notes if we want them to. And it, we can be very much at peace with it and doesn't have to be nervous, you know. It's possible, you know, and so that little bit of things uh, we we do this way rather than use pedal, because the pedal uh, kind of uh, uh, gentrifies the uh, the sound too much, you know. It, it takes away the stroke, the, the attack. Yeah. So okay, let's let's go uh, now. The other, the second thing I want to talk about. There's always this little rest. Uh, uh, it's very hard to. Uh, convince anybody and say you have to lift half the pedal. Uh, but if what, if I would say that's the ultimate expression, you know, uh, there's a lot of this kind of rhythm, uh, this kind of articulation in Chopin, right? And uh, the old, the late Fu Tsong when he was teaching at Shanghai Conservatory master classes, you know, students, of course, have, were reacting very slowly. They couldn't do something like that. So he would do this, something showing. <laughs> he would go, raise his hand, and so that uh, to demonstrate that you need to come up. But the, the more excited, that movement, the, the longer the movement is. If it's just mildly excited, but but that rest, instead of thinking uh, it is just a kind of a you know a very nice gesture between you and me, we know <laughs> you want to make it known. Yeah. Can we try that uh, anywhere? Now, from the beginning, because it was another spot. One, two, 
yes, this is this is this is the measure. This is the measure that we is very important. So. Uh, I think this is a decrescendo. I'm not sorry. And wait a little bit, and then, and then you start. So, very often, uh, I hear the plate speeding up because three notes are boring. So speeding up. Actually, this is the most important part where to, uh, you make it finish, and then the next one begins on the upbeat, and and also probably not speeding. Yeah. Can can you start anywhere? Just a couple measures be before maybe. Too quick. So that we understand that the, the next one is actually a new play, new. Yes. Let's try one more time, please. So to play this A sharp much longer. You have to kind of uh, violate your mind, play long, yeah? Um, start, start again, yeah. From, from the beginning? From here. Da, da. Too long, too short, and then very soft A. Like that. Yes. Would you be able to play a pedal at all? Is it possible? Um, just, sort of that. just clear with the pedal. Yeah. Clear the pedal there. Yeah. Same here. There we go. Now this without rhythm, so. So a yard it Not a It's it's kind of rhetorical. Yes. So it's really it's quintuple, so da di da 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 da. So this this rest is misleading, right? Yeah. It doesn't belong to the quintuple. So it shouldn't be distorted. It no, not at all. Yes, da 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 da. Very seriously, da. Because we have da 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 Okay, maybe I think right now you play a slightly uh, 
uh, clearer yeah. than it was before. Mm -hmm. Can you try thinking that the right hand is actually a lot softer? Let's see what happens. Yes, and, and of course then, uh, relatively speaking, the left hand got to be also very, very soft. Try, try to bring down the dynamic by one notch. Yes, yes. The left hand got to be hovering over the keys so that you, you play with much very much with the fingertips, and you're just moving around, like shoving around. This was uh, about four, four years ago, just before, actually, no, maybe three, just before the pandemic, Kissing came to New York and gave an incredible recital that included Schumann's F minor sonata. And I got, lucky enough, I got a stage ticket and I was sitting a little bit just behind, so around in this place, about this. And so I had a very good view of his left hand. And uh, his left hand was very good, really hovering over the keys the entire time, hardly ever comes up. So now, when he took a bow, this is what he looks like. <laughs> and I could tell that I was right behind him. And the right shoulder is at least two inches higher than, than the left shoulder. And I was thinking, oh, poor guy, you know, poor guy. You know, that's how piano, piano playing kills us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, because, you know, you have to keep the left hand in check. And the right hand is the one that, that shows the flamboyance, and the left hand, the ob obedient uh, left hand. And, uh, and he really, the left hand was incredibly, it was close to the keys, it was always in contact with the keys. And yes, we have to, because uh, while the right hand has, if, Let's put it this way. Why do we have to play? Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen my master class before. Uh, so if I play. You can hear all the Ds. You, you will hear everything and you know that I made such a big decrescendo. If I don't, of course, the last one gets the prize. And so this is the nature of piano, okay? This is something that other instruments, the instrumentalists don't have to worry too much about. Of course, the tuba, you, you don't want it to play too loud in the orchestra, but uh, uh, because they have different tone, they have different color, but we have a mixing board, which is called a sound board, and we are mixed, the, the sound has to be mixed. So this is the primary reason why we always, always have to watch out the balance and the, the voicing, and why the top is usually voiced too. And, and so, so the left hand's duty is far greater than the right hand because left hand's dealing with uh, usually between mezzo piano and quadruple pianissimo. And that we still, number one, the hand is functional at a very, very soft level and not dropping notes. That is so hard. And uh, still it will keep the articulations alive, and uh, et cetera. There's a hundred other things that I have to take care of. Just so that the queen upstairs can, can be free, you know. And so, 
uh, I watched your left hand, and it was too active. You know, it has to be much closer to the keys. And let's try now. And so that once the left hand is out of the way, the range, say, then what happens to the right, the, the upper melody is that it has a very wide range to roam. Then you can, it can be a lot more expressive and, you know, we go up and down, up and down, up and down. Un, undeterred, if the left hand is too high, the threshold is held up, the range becomes smaller. So this is the reason, yeah? Let's try. For example, this. So I have probably the dynamic range between this. So this is close to pianissimo, and this close to mezzo forte. And so you have a huge range, while the left hand is hovering about pianissimo and triple pianissimo. Let's try that one more time. That's the left hand is too loud. Are you using soft pedal? Yes. Okay. A lot of a lot of times we use soft pedal, not for the right hand. We use it for the left hand. Yeah. And so, then what do you do with the right hand? If you know you you're supposed to play loud in the right hand, but you need the soft pedal for the left hand, you play the right hand a little louder. So it's a. Uh, this is one of those. And sometimes, if we need a note up there that needs to be louder, we left half the soft pedal just for that. Horowitz did that a lot. He will play, 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 and there's a note that is supposed to shine. And he lift up his soft pedal and, and play that note and go back down. And so he, yeah, yeah, I, I used to call that the negative use of soft pedal. You know, you, you lift up only for one note or a couple notes and you go back down. Uh, but um, it's too loud. I mean, So it's basically all fingertip, all fingertip. Yeah. Let's, let's try one more time. Come down. I think, thank you, I think that's fantastic. Don't, don't you hear the difference? Yes. Yeah, yeah it, it's incredible. Now it sounds, now it, the sound is desirable, okay? This is, it's very important. You know, very often we say, oh, uh, bring out a top, bring out a top. But what kind? You know, you don't want to bring out the top and then it goes, ah, da, 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 da. but if you bring out the top, that, oh, then, then you are, uh, the listeners are with you, you know. Uh, so, this piece, on the other hand, is so messy. <laughs> There's so many, so many notes, so many notes. Uh, why do you think you wrote so many? You know, so thick, you know. Maybe he just tried to imitate an orchestra, but he wanted to have sonority and um, um, atmosphere and trying to make the piano sound like an orchestra. Very good, very good. Uh, I wonder, you know, when he doubles it, plays the octave twice yet, um, and then jumps up with a pedal down to add sonority to it. 
We have to be careful with the word sonority. Yes, sonority is a good word. It's the right word. But however, what we understand on the, in, on the sonority, very often we think of sonority and say, oh, a warm tone, a warm and very full tone. Um, full tone, I didn't notice the marking of such. Uh, very often in the late romantics, uh, full tones will be generally denoted by mezzo forte. <laughs> then you say, beautiful full tone. I didn't see any. And so uh, we have to, I think, you know, what I showed earlier. By the way, now, if I were playing Bra uh, Beethoven, uh, Mozart, that's good enough. If I play Beethoven, and if I play Brahms, but if I'm playing Debussy, you know, it, we, we're just the, the sort of uh, the, the, the structure of the sound, how we can bring out clarity. This is, uh, uh, on the other hand, if you need, say, sometimes we have a melody. This happens a lot in the right hand. We need to uh, change the volume while the melody should stay alive. Uh, uh, if we play the left hand loud, the volume is immediately uh, 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 loud. Uh, if we reduce the left hand, it immediately becomes soft. Now this, this is the interesting trick that we apply, especially to music where it was loud and transiting, transitioning to soft. You know, uh, loud and then soft, very often the melody gets lost. Now, very often, uh, uh, then what do you do? You keep the melody almost the same and you reduce the, the lower part. Then the intensity of the melody is, is retained. But on the other hand, uh, when we want to play very loud, do we need to play the right hand very loud? Not necessary. Why is that? The piano sound, on, on the good piano, like you know, the Steinway or this Kawai, that the tone, piano tone is supposed to function like that. If you play soft, it is a round, gentle sound. It has a gentle color. It is kind of a, a has a certain buoyancy to it. And when you increase in dynamic, it becomes a little harder. And then it will reach a plateau where it is just hard, metallic. And if you increase the volume above that, it's just a matter of decibels. It has nothing to do with color anymore. The, the function of the color has stopped. So there is a range where we have color differentiation. So when we want to play soft, usually we want the color, we want the gentleness of the tone. Uh, so, uh, so even if we have a loud passage, we have to determine, do I want still the, the, the ability, the available color changes or not. If we want, then we have to restrain the dynamic range to where this exists. Now, on each piano, it's different, right? If the piano's really beat up, it may not, ex not have much, yeah. But usually, there should be some. And sometimes, the range is rather small. We have to figure it out. And after that, above that, it's only a matter of loud, loudness, decibels. 
and there's no change in character possible. And that was also the reason why we keep the left hand so soft, so that we can have more of this range, you know, at our disposal. You know. And uh, very often I tell the students, if you have a melodic, beautiful melodic line, you find first the range that makes it beautiful. And then you construct the rest to see how that can help and enhance. All the markings come secondary, because still, the soprano, the, the voice is the most price, uh, pricey thing. You know, we have to honor that. So, uh, whether or not the left hand is very, very clear, that is that can have uh, different places. It can have the, um, you know, like you say, sometimes like Trump, uh, orchestral. Uh, uh, are you familiar with his symphonies? Um, I have heard some, also the poem of ecstasy. Yeah, uh, from yes. the ecstasy, and also Prometheus. I've heard of them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was just telling everybody the, in, in a different class the other day that if you can find find the Prometheus uh, poem, the Prometheus. Um, uh, played by Ashkenazi and Kondrashin of uh, London, I think it's Philharmonic, uh, Kondrashin and Ashkenazi. There's an absolutely phenomenal recording. Of course, you know Ashkenazi plays just so incredibly well. The, and the mix and everything is just ideal. Uh, then you will get an idea of uh, a good what you would imagine if it were to be an orchestral sound. Um, when I see this da 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 da, this repeating chord, he uses that a lot in orchestra. And usually it's occupied by, by the brass. Bum, 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 bum. And they can be dark, bo, 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 kind of ominous. Or it can be a bit brighter. Uh, but uh, when I see that, that, that's what I hear. And uh, so not always in total con uh, pedal, you know, it's a little edgy, you know. Um, and uh, of course, you know, when it comes to the lower voice, da -da -ba -da, you have to use less pedal. And don't worry about it. Oh, is it going to be too, too choppy? If you play soft enough, Chop you or not doesn't matter. You know, da da ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. You know, uh, and also if you play in this hall, for example, you don't need much pedal for that. Uh, let's see. You, I don't know how you manage some of those things. It, it's already quite a, it, it's quite a accomplishment, really. Um, it's impossible. It's difficult to, um, the, the very fast arpeggios, the tenth. Yeah. Uh, and I find that my little fingers as well, like an angle to the key, and sometimes I, I put the, J, the adjacent key, so I try quickly to, to move it laterally to the right so that it's more in line. So it's if you play, come up, mm -hmm. instead of trying to reach, You know, it kind of reach uh, to come up. Just kind of a, a yeah, that's another thing. That's another thing. Um, my last professor, Russell Sherman, uh, you know, I hate to say that he didn't have the best finger technique, okay. Uh, he wasn't drilled <laughs> when he was young. Uh, but he managed to play concert with never miss it, a note. And so I was very curious because some of those things, he, the way he played was so quirky, so strange uh, sounding, but yet he will manage clean playing. 
So what he does is he will always just group, play the notes which he can reach, he can manage. And then he will make a break and go to the next position and play the, the next one. And then play the next position to the next. And so he never overextend his hand to any degree. Uh, so, and then he will sort of, you know, kind of uh, shrink those nodes that he can grip and reach in one stretch and then go to the next one. Uh, so we hear all the notes, sometimes it's not quite even. But nevertheless, the notes were there. And if he, and if he wants to cover up the unevenness, he will turn that into to a harmony. And so then, then you don't mind if it is uneven in the harmony. But, uh, but that, that would be something that you could, uh, you know, so if I play he, and uh, and even though you know you, you should explore different fingerings that enables you to play in small groups in small groups and the mind is faster than finger so you tell the hand to jump to the next to the next, to the next. It's faster than you have to really work the finger out. Mm -hmm. you know, that's a possibility. You know. I heard that um, Scriabin had fairly small hands. Exactly. Like, that he wrote things with such big stretches. That I wonder if he could play it himself. He, he was able to play himself, and he probably made a point you know, to be proud of with himself. And same was true with Bartok. He also didn't have large hands, and he also had large reaches. You know, it's <laughs> On the other hand, I think Chopin could reach quite far, and he made sure that everybody is comfortable so he would write arpeggiations. <laughs> Can show you the different attitude <laughs> between different composers. Okay, thank you very much. It was very impressive. Okay. Okay. What are you playing? The first case of Chopin. Oh, okay, wonderful. Thank you.
wow, that's bravo. That's really impressive. I especially, well, I mean, the, the, the finger work the, is brilliant. And I love the middle section. Um, the, the middle section, which Chopin didn't like to be called trio. <laughs> middle section, even though it's the skeletal form. Um, one thing I learned from this latest book on Chopin by Alan Walker, I thought was wonderful when he said, in Chopin's music, there's this expression of regrets. There's a lot of regrets. Um, he suggested that uh, Chopin was, re uh, was sad that he was rejected by the recruitment of military. Imagine that. Now here everybody is trying to get out of military. He was ups uh, not happy that he was being rejected on the basis of being too short. I don't know who was shorter. I, I get confused now. They were two, we have two very, very short composers. One is Schubert, who was also uh, exempt from the military service because he didn't reach the height. Uh, one of them is 4'9", the other one is 4'10". I can't remember which. I'm uh, confused now who is 4'9", and who, who is 4'10". They're tiny. They were tiny. And no wonder, you know, George Sand called, nicknamed Chopin the Petit Wasso, the little bird. Uh, he was very sh small. But playing Chopin often, you know, there is this not just the longing, uh, but there is a sense of regret that you know, may never see it again, regretful. And that you, you seem to bring out quite beautifully. Again, we'll continue the, the quest from uh, Robert uh, that we need to have differentiation of height, uh, dynamic. Uh, I call that uh, dynamic shaping. We have a melody, and we need to shape it dynamically, you know, um, so that not every single note is the same dynamic in, in the melody, that we have a little clearer shaping. Then the melody, the shape of the melody comes out, and it can be much more expressive that way. Can we just start from the, the, the mid middle section? Just, just, just this, yeah. Yeah. Because um, this is reduction of full text, and I used to play normally. I used to play Chopin with the reduction of Paderewski. Yeah. Okay. So personally, me, I would like to ask you about one way. Yeah. I don't know if it's uh, for the reduction of it's by Chopin. Okay. So for example, when uh, the middle section starts, yeah, we have increased mark. Uh, and it goes to crescendo. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the scherzo is very repetitive. Yeah. So, and here we also have the similar space. But I don't know if it's Chopin or, or the reduction. Uh, it's different. Okay, different. okay. No, no, it's perfectly. And, and here as well. Okay. No, so. uh, that, that's a very fair question. Let me answer that. Um, if I start this this trail section like this. If I start very, very soft, If 
I start, not terribly soft. By the time it is the second time, we already are familiar with this, and we are coming back, and we're not terribly soft anymore. But when you first begin, I will probably think it's in pianissimo. So. And the second one. So it's justified. You understand what I'm trying to say? So I don't begin the trail section by. I don't play begin like that, but I play. Because it's the first time. That be much softer than that. Yes, sir. Not, not it go on. And then we're somewhat in the dynamic. a little too, too loud. If you can do that, Claire. shaping it. Yes, what I mean is that we need dynamic shaping. So the, be careful with the first F sharp. It was a little too loud. Play softer so that we can go on and even go on and then come back down. Louder. G sharp needs to be louder. Very good. So if can we just try the Just try. I think it must be the piano. Yes, so I have slightly. Yeah, the, the G sharp is a little gentler. Yes, like that. So this is a, a, a nice place to demonstrate how many voices does Chopin have? That would be one, bass, three, four, five. So easily five voices. So play polyphony uh, that you listen to how each of these voices relate to 
you know, independently from the other voices. So therefore, five voices. So, Delay the uh, G sharp, then we'll hear. So delay it and play louder. Yeah. Then, what is the accent for? So, it's for that. Yes. This little, uh, this kind of a little accent, uh, like this, uh, what are they for? Does anybody, can anybody suggest? What are these little, little signs? If you are a teacher, I so many of them you are, when you tell a student, say, bring this note out, let this note be heard, you were probably writing the student's score either a little accent or a little line, a little potato, either way. But, uh, but that's very often what the composer meant. They are not necessarily accents at all, you know, the accents this way we think. It's, it's not necessarily a dynamic issue. It could very well be just you play this note that we notice. So how, what, what uh, note do we notice? We, the note we prepare, those notes will be noticed. So as the word prepares means pray, it's before. So before we play it, we think about it. So what often that means, it is a, a little bit of a delay. You know, you, you give the extra little something to it before you play it. And immediately, the mind sorts it out. Oh, that note was special. And very often, we don't even have to play louder. We just have to prepare it. You know? so, so here, so, so something, and will be heard. Yes, this one has no. This, I'll, we're not a pre prepare, not only not prepare, I'll play a little sooner. softer.
good. There we go. Yeah. So it's these are small little things. Uh, you know, we only need a few small things, and they will really uh, serve the character of the section very uh, well. Um, how, it's all about, you know, human attention. You know, you, you do something that the listener wants to hear, and they, they catch you, and you know, uh, something that happens, oh, I want to keep listening. I want to keep listening, and that's it, and that's enough. The rest is out of the focus. It's like you're looking at a picture. You know, the good photographer will tell you what to look at. And they want to, and sometimes they even blur the background so you don't see or you don't notice. But it's, there's always a focal point, and that's important. OK, let's go to the beginning. Yes, the, the, the two quarter fantastic, this despair. request Can I just hear the first four note in the right hand? Can you start a little softer? Yes. There we go. That's right. Yes. Yes, and also come a little later. Not too precise. You're playing. You play exactly the, the right, you know, continuous eighth note. I want you to group them. That's one group. That's another. Yes. So, can I hear this? So. There's a there's a accent. Can that be a little faster? Yeah. It has to bite. Bite. Good. like staccato. Okay. It's the second finger often that is the lazy finger. This, so making sure your finger is striking, the second finger. Play just once as an exercise. Yes, but, but with finger. You, you, you're playing with hand. You're doing this. I want this. Yes, but really acute. You know, really, you have to feel it's very, very agile. Okay, now play. There we go, that's good. Yes, I want to you to separate the group.
Yes. This is a, a trick of a virtuoso pianist. They use this trick all the time. And that is, how can you play passage works faster than the tempo? <laughs> if I play uh, in tempo, uh, now in the same tempo, I play fast. <laughs> It's the same speed, the same tempo, but I play this passage much faster. You group them, making sure only that the last note, the last beat, that arrival note, the beat, is on time. Not early, not late, of course, not early. And so that, what does that mean? You delay the start of the passage. You delay the start of the passage, then you have to shrink this, that passage, and therefore it's faster. But you are arriving at, on the, at the same time, the old timing. So that's why I'm saying, and this is, you can see clearly that's what Chopin was asking. That's why those little slurs, those slurs that separate them. See, he, he has a slur from this, and then another slur. And so it gives us the, you know, the, the opportunity to do these kind of things. Then it can be very brilliant, but not terribly fast. No. Let's try. Yes, in other words, you hear that, you can hear both my hands entry. Start is later. In other words, there's another way of thinking about it, that I'm only going to the next beat. I go to the. Yes. 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 But don't overdo. Okay, this is always a danger. Uh, you overdo it, and then it becomes a little bit too eccentric sounding. We do it just right amount that nobody will notice that. They just, they just sense, oh wow, that's, a, that's very brilliant. But they don't know that you're grouping them. But this is the, I think it's, often I see this in composers. They mark those slurs. And then people don't pay attention. Uh, they think it's legato. It's not legato. It has nothing to do with legato and not legato, but it has to do with the groups of notes. Yeah. So there is one thing that <clears throat> bothers me about pedaling in this okay. quick passages. So what pedaling Most of the times, we rely on the finger. <laughs> play just like this. It doesn't need pedal. Right? And then, and then the C. Very often I do this. Uh, if I want to make, I, how do I want my left hand to sound? I play with two hands. 
Then I say, okay, that's what I want. So I'll play, try to copy that with the left hand. Try, try with two hands. Good. Now, <laughs> that's it. If you copy that and get the left hand to do that, then you are free of pedal. Very well, sounds fine without pedal, right? <laughs> and so, very often the, it's like that. Um, do we need a lot of pedal? Uh, yes, we, we need pedal, but usually they're so short that you don't hear them. What are the pedals for? They're usually to create certain resonance, to make the tone sounding more either brilliant or more rounded or beautiful or something, or more resonant, meaning there's more tone. That's often what you use it for. But, uh, Articulation is quite important in this skeletal, I believe. Uh, can I just hear one more time, th one more thing? This. One hand. So, what you, what we did with two hand, we did a di di uh, dynamic differentiation. And also, we were able to connect. So the connection we can use the pedal for. And then, okay. So this is louder, and then with the pedal, and pedal off. Good. They are always good. Now let's see. Play with two hands. Two hands. So I I feel yeah. Yes. Sorry about this. Let me put it back on. It, there's, there's a little crunch. It's here. Yes. But make making it really stick. Good. So in one hand, you see, I I don't just hear, but I hear much. I'm not bringing out this note. I'm just trying to get this uh, the the tritone. So 
OK， 三一九。Has to be fast. Should not be slow. Yeah. Now this this article. So. It reminds me. You know this staccato. Staccato, there. Very few people play that. Now, so. So, you're afraid of staccato. We are all afraid of staccato. Yeah. 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 See this yum? No, the, this is louder. This is dark yum. This. Loud and then fast. Yeah, there was. Which pedal? I'm using this. I'm using pedal. This is without pedal, and now pedal, pedal off. Yeah. Except play this quickly. Very fast. Yeah, we'll go. And then. An accent, Lum. and then stop. Yeah, and then and then in. And then
and this is the hope, you know. Good. Now go on. Go on. Well, you use you, you, you are very honest. You play all the the, the original finger. <laughs> You can play the first note with the right hand. Yes, so like this. And because the right hand is already there. Yes, but, but don't, don't go f so fast that I cannot hear the notes. Just a little bit break. So we can... Yes. See, that's too fast. You're playing. With the same speed of the eighth note, if you don't do this grouping, it's way too fast. Just, I can play slower. That's much slower, right? Or I can play a mess. Yes. Yeah, like that. Exactly. And this, you achieve two things. You achieve both the, the, the passage faster, you also achieve the first note of the, the is clear. Right? If I play, did you, did you hear? I didn't hear it. But then I hear it. Yes. That's it. Excellent. There we go. Excellent. All right. You see that? <laughs> That's a little trick. It's a very important little trick. Thank you, so much. you can use that nice to meet you. everywhere. You can use, you know, you can use just about the most, most of the passage, fast passages in, in list. You will need to apply a little bit of that. 
to just to boost the 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 factor of brilliance. You know, it's a <laughs> it's an important little trick. Okay. All right.
guys are so brilliant. <laughs> what is there to teach? <laughs> Your right hand is fine. The left hand isn't. Um, what is, as I know, uh, mentioned earlier, you know, the challenge of the left hand, uh, the dynamic, it has to stay uh, at a distance from the right hand, at a distance. But it doesn't mean that we just make it shut up. This is what happens to a lot of students. I mean, I, I, I don't want to make general statements, but well, I do. <laughs> I am going to make one. Uh, I have noticed, you know, students who have gone to Curtis, within a year or two, they all made their left hand play very softly. And therefore, they become a lot more polished something, which is fantastic. Uh, often, you know, other students, well, they, they're just listening with some uh, envy and say, how do they do this so nice? I think they just play the left hand soft. But now, are they soft and responsible? That's another question. That's another business, okay? A lot of time, they're soft and they're dropping notes. That's not responsible. Other times, they're just soft and it's like authoritarian regime and everything is right hand and everything is top note. That's no good. We have to cultivate the left hand you know, more uh, stringently than the right hand. As you were playing this, I was thinking, you know, uh, uh, some of the early passages, and I was thinking, well, it would be a nice, you know, it's a, uh, you know, it's the singing style, uh, bel canto, bel canto, that's what Chopin always asked for. Uh, where the soprano has the ultimate right, can be a total prima donna, can be a total jerk, and she has the right. You know, and uh, the other voice have to follow. I was thinking about it while you were playing, I was thinking, does ev everybody know who Gerald Moore was? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. the fantastic uh, vocal accompanist that did the complete Schubert song leaders with Fischer Disco. And I remember listening to, I, I managed to listen to about half of it, of the 600 songs. And uh, I, one thing that Mr. Moore usually did, he was very gentle. He was sort of dismissive. It's almost, it's like, uh, I'm just here, but please don't see me. <laughs> don't write about me. <laughs> write about the soloist, the singer. And uh, uh, of course, he's far better than, than that far, far better. It was very, very interesting. You know, we can learn a, a lot from what he was doing. Uh, there's, he watched out for texture, for one thing. Okay, he would not smear the tone, so that uh, let the singer have the, the thing to, uh, to fill in the, the warmth and things like that. It, it's amazing what we can learn, and I remember you know, I grew up listening to the two sing, singing the Finterreise and kind of engraved in my mind until one day I saw, I bought a CD. It was, this is long after Gerald Moore has passed away. 
It was, it was Alfred Brando <laughs> playing with Fisher Discord and thinking, oh, oh, this is going to be very interesting. I wonder if Alfred knows how to accompany at all. You know, but on the other hand, he was such a Schubert specialist. So there ought to be something very interesting. I bought it. I bought the CD and I listened. Uh, I remember it was during the days I had a little retina detachment in my right eye. I was, you know, confined to, to a chair at a certain angle for 12 days. And I listened to it repeatedly, repeatedly. It made me cry so many times. It was incredible. It's incredible. That was at the age where people were already starting to condemn Fischer Disco, that he was talking too much in his singing. It was less singing but more talking. And I said, I disagree. It was the right balance between talk and speaking and, and, and singing. But uh, thank God Alpha Brando didn't kill Fischer Disco. Uh, it was, he was respectful. But, you know, it, it just shows you how difficult it is to accompany. It can make or break. It is really, uh, if the singer has such a grand voice that it doesn't really need you, then yes, you can hide a little. But to really make music, you know, the left hand is the one that shows how to break or uh, make or break. Let's try again. I'm going to point it out. There are many, many general things. So for example, right away, I will have this and the bass. And then this about pianissimo. Yeah. Make it a little darker. Yes. A little less right hand. A little more. Gets much louder in the right hand. Yes, now this. This, there's a single note. That's but no staccato. But articulate. Yes, if you're connected with the pedal. Without, you, you make sure, we use pedal, but we, pedal is gone. Yeah, I usually, but in practice I say, when the pedal has removed about 60% of the sound, I play the next note. Around there, I play. There we go. <laughs> no, so it's a it's a hand and foot coordination. Good. 
now. Separate them. So, so, in left hand, when we come up higher in the left hand, we play on and more of the thumb. When it goes lower, we honor of the fifth. So, so that effectually, the highest notes here, the lower notes is there. Then we have a range of two octaves rather than one octave. So, top, bass. Okay. <laughs> Just do do it one slow. So so uh, I'm talking about the right hand's fine. You see, I was <laughs> I was making the introduction. I say it's the left hand. So so left hand thumb. Equal and lower fifth, fifth, fifth. That's about it. So now make the don't play the full length of eighth note. Good. No, you don't. You really don't need pedal. Yalam, baram, baram. See, the left hand has got too loud. This is definitely more. And now, this, this expression, if, you know, sometimes I joke about this, you know, if, if you have heard enough Rachmaninoff's recording, he himself playing the piano, he has this quirky habit of altering rhythms. He will probably play he will play so speeding up. No no not slowing down. This repetition is a, a typical romantic expression. Very, very cool, you know, very laissez faire. Yes, I'm making it less important. It's only to accompany this. So, good. Now, play the right hand, and I'll try to accompany your left hand.
Yes. You see, the left hand is, can make music sound very free. But uh, so what did I make do that's different? I, in generally, uh, general, I try to avoid, number one, try to avoid downbeat. But if I can avoid beat, I will. Any beat, except maybe the upbeat. But uh, what happens with beats, especially downbeat, you know, it is boom, boom. So uh, it's, it brings you down. You, can, you cannot be, be flighty. Uh, also, and that has the character of more for me. It's a little bit too militaristic. It's a little too you know, controlling, authoritarian. You know. So um, I'll use the other, uh, what I just did uh, in the other uh, with the staccato. Uh, this is how it's written. It's actually staccato, the bass. It's the Chopin's intent, this tom, tom, it's, it's on the toe, you know, it's towing it rather than healing heel playing, uh, stepping. So a lot of this, so I start here. So Chopin often writes very long pedal, and we have heard a hundred times already that on his piano, on the playel, that's how it should be played, uh, uh, long pedal. That's because playel has straight uh, stringing, and parallel stringing, and we have the cross stringing. Cross stringing make it very resonant, so we, can, uh, we have a lot more tone. Uh, so we use half pedal. So this is such a problem. It's, it's really quite crude. We shape like the note. The, the, the thing we watch out for, any time that we have to make it softer. So this, from here on, decrescendo, and then back. But, very good. Watch out. 
These are just tail notes. Don't play. <laughs> yes. Isn't that interesting? The, the D. <laughs> I mean, that note, you don't want people to think it's a mistake. So we play along. Yeah. Yes, can you play right hand along? Yes, do you really want to make that stop? I will save it for he. Sorry. Yes, one more time. Very good. Now, pianissimo. Yes, try once without hello. Yeah, but you are going to hold. There we go. That's already very good. In this hall, with the reverb, you're fine. But yes, let's do a little pedal. It's not, it's, one doesn't hear. It's a, this is a user pedal that goes this fast. Yes, but uh, you, so two pedal. One here, second. And then, and wait. As much as you need. Yeah, but with the pedals, clear out. You finish, and then that's it. Okay, let's try it. This is a this little hairpin. It's longer than an accent, 
this everybody used it, starting with Beethoven that I know of. I think Mozart even used. This are expressive marking. So, yeah. It is written on top of the G. So, so we go to the G. And then and come, so you press down, you lower, come out. That's it. Very, very nice. Now, let me hear the, this theme. Okay, can you play the right hymn for me? Siciliano situation. Total. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the three is soft. That's much better. And of course, you don't want to make people think that you're making accent, but So the first one, making sure the first one is really soft. This got to be soft. Very good. Now, so. It's a, a, you know, it's a, the, your friend is singing with you now. I don't think it's a decrescendo. And then, unison, unison uh, talks so much this time. It has to do with how you color it. You can have, or, or you can, I usually watch how the unison, for the unison. The, 
the, when composer uses unison, it's because he wants different tone. So we don't want, but a little rustic voice. Change the voice. Not, that's too much now. And also, this is a scale. It's a descending, and you in, in melodic lines, it's decrescendo. Don't don't make crescendo. For me, it's still too too strident in the right hand. the left hand to use the left hand to help the right hand. The first note is your right hand and then left hand. So the left hand has to be much more sensitive and legato. Mm -hmm. There we go, that's very good. Let's try it together. Almost. Now, this is like a bright eyed. me of the second movement of the Brahms C major sonata, the, the Mina leader. Accent. After you have an accent, you're in trouble. But if you don't learn not to make accent, then you have other opportunity. So how, how loud do you know that, how loud do I know I'm, I'm playing that note? I listen to the, the color of the tone. That's what I was just talking about. When the notes are soft and on the piano, it has a gentle tone. At one point, it becomes, there's a stroke. No stroke. Stroke, no stroke. When there's no stroke, I can do anything with it. I, I can make it bright. Or I can make it dreamy. I can stay there. Or I can make it bright. That's a choice, artistic choice, right? But if you play, then you can only do decrescendo. Very good, very good. Just one little thing. Um, this I learned, sometimes you learn from, from
from your own uh, reviews. <laughs> I was about 20, 22, I think, no, 23. And I was invited to play a concert in Germany in, in a festival. And uh, in attendance was William Kempf. He was very old then, in a wheelchair. He was very kind to me anyways. I got a very, very good review. And for one piece, the reviewer wrote that this, this man's playing makes you want to hark, hearken the sound. In other words, you want to listen to it. And I thought, oh, I wasn't really paying attention to that. I wasn't that aware of it. Yes, there were moments of real softness. And so, so of course, we play soft. But of course, when you play soft, you want to hear that it, is, it has a purity and clarity of this and that. And, but I wasn't aware that, oh, I made people want to hear that. So the rule, the rule of thumb, if you want your listener to hear you, uh, it's not by throwing him a bone, but you actually invite him in to take the bone himself. You, know. you, you want them to come and listen, hey, you hear me, you know. But it's not tonelessness. That's a different thing. It's not a place, so, so therefore I play very soft and people will hear you. No, I, I don't hear you. <laughs> One of my students plays very, very soft. He is very self-indulgent and plays very soft. I say, you think it's very beautiful and that, but I can, for me, I can go to sleep. <laughs> but, but, so, but you attract people's attention. I think it needs a little timing because this interval needs a little time. Yes. So, so we have. Now, so it carries on this interval. So this upwards carries on. Yes. So this is a himiola. One, two, three. Yes. Isn't that that ought to be a very very wondrous moment, no? moment yeah mm -hmm. you you're too loud before because then if I play It's 
try. Uh, same track. Accent. No. You have to use timing. This is the this is the nature of the, uh, the, the, the prima donnas, the singers. Yeah. They come in any time they wish. Da, 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 di, da, da, di, da, da. So. <laughs> They're not going to follow your rhythm. <laughs> but that's the way we have to play. Yeah. Very nice. Yes, now this one, the left hand is too much. First. As soft as you can, as soft as you can. Uh, so it's the top note of the left hand. Yes. One more. Let, let's try one more together. Make it quick. That's too much right hand. So we start almost mostly here. All the way to the base. So, in other words, again, this is double octave, means unison, and so we have a lot of choice. So, I choose the middle with some top, and then now almost no right hand, left hand. Gradually, only the bass. <laughs> you have never done this, I know. So, see. Yes. And this. What happened? Why do we do this kind of? Well, I mean, I do this all the time. But what what can can I get from this kind of things? You remove the 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 mechanical aspect of piano playing. I mean, if I play. Brilliant. But if I play. Then there's. There's a little more to it, so it's a, you know, it's a. I often purposely remove that if I think the music is more interesting. But like the scherzo before, uh, where the, 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 uh, you know, the technical aspect is fantastic, then I'll exaggerate that. <laughs> it depends on which one is, right? Okay, uh, let's see what else. Basically, I felt um, there was, you were restricted. Uh, you were very considerate what your left hand is going to do. And I was trying 
not to. I will follow the right hand. You know, what, what is... Okay, let's hear this. Yes, but staccato. This is... Yes, so... The left hand as soft as you can. That's it. Yes. So the left hand right at the key. That's the sound. That's the sound I think it is. And uh, so, be now play the lento. So, can you remove the? This is where we really can get a lot of idea that the, the, the A flat in the bass is just a drone, a, you know, pedal point, but so think of this note as the first note. And of course, this harmony requires resolution, so this is softer. Yeah. Yes, you don't have to, you can create the pedal less frequent. It's not necessarily louder. Why don't you play the E flat with the right hand? Careful. Yes, it's fat. Because, because it has no expression, you know. It is a figuration. Very good. Okay, now let's hear how this flutter sound. A little more bass in this case, and then line up the unison of the D flat. And so let's play once the unison. So a little most second third. 
So loudest, second loud, softest. That's too loud. Good. And now, good. There we go. That's loud enough. <laughs> this is another thing. Both this applies both here and in most of the Mozart, where Mozart loved to write forty in piano and forty and forty, and you say, "Wow, how loud is the forty? It's loud." <laughs> and piano, how soft is that? It's Soft. <laughs> You're not supposed to say, "Oh, forte, whoa, <laughs> piano, <beep."> <laughs> you know." <laughs> but you are saying, "Forte, loud, and piano, soft." But you know, it's, the difference is, in in, a, in in the manner of speaking, it's just expression. So you, forte, <laughs> piano, and that's it. No more. Yeah. Should I try? Yum, but um, a little, a little more than that. Yeah. A little more bassy. Good. Yes. Now this. Wiping the keys. Yes. So. This is a Chopin's favorite rhythm. You know, da dum da da. It comes on triplet. And I, I have no doubt that that's where Rachmaninoff got his idea. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Very good. Okay, so that's the general the tone and voice. Uh, I was fascinated about your scales. So let me hear one more time. Yes, I, I think the oh this was very good, but both. He's marking, it's a staccato, and he also clear the pedal. So, with substance. Yep. I could just play this. There we go, you don't have to be afraid of it. No, no, no. You're, you're thinking, oh, if I'm going to play too, 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 too short and it's going to be ugly, and so you use pedal. I said, it's not, it's not, it's not necessary. If you can accept this, then don't, don't use the pedal. So, so this is another thing. Uh, when you play short notes, you are you invited to use arm to play it, the entire forearm. Why? Because, I don't know, let me see. Well, that weighs about three pounds. So if you move <laughs> three pounds, it's not going to be very fast. So, and this, this, you know, this attack and the release will be quite natural. 
It's not going to be that, you know. So if you use the entire, so basically if I say using the forearm, that means you play with your elbow. Because elbow, if you move the elbow, the forearm moves. If you don't move your elbow, the forearm <laughs> goes like this. So elbow. So, so if I play, then I don't have to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> With your elbow. There all go. Okay. Do rum bum bum. Yes, too short. Use the real really it's a little laborious, but that's what we want. Yeah. Good. And that's too short. Yeah. The G was too short. That's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is how we uh, give the dosage of a, of a short note. Uh, you know, we, we are all nervous, you know, neurotic and thinking, oh, it's, it's short notes, it's going to be strike, strident and it's going to be ugly. Yes, yes, because there's fast release. And so we want to slow down the release. And then if you just trust your arm, you know, then it's okay. And we'll just be fine. Yeah. Okay, very good. You're very welcome.